The entrance to Aguas Calientes, the doors into Grand Machu Picchu. Cue music. Where Helen and Tim travel. This is the last video in our Peru adventure series. To give you a quick recap, we went through Salcantay Pass. Along the way, we stay in these Andean huts, make our way through the Peruvian Amazon rainforest, visit a fruit farm as well as a coffee farm, and then we start making our way to the train tracks that lead us into Aguas Calientes, the town right before Machu Picchu. Just to give you a visualization of what we're dealing with here. Nice, steep, big steps. The next part of our four-day Salcantay Pass journey takes us through the Peruvian Amazon, formerly known as the Peruvian Jungle. About 13% of the entire Amazon rainforest is located in Peru, and the others are in Brazil and Colombia. Once we get down this pass, down into the valley, we'll be breaking for lunch, and then we're going to be making our way down to the Amazon forest. So that should be fun, minus the crazy mosquitoes, apparently they're warning us about, so let's see what happens. So JC, our guide, was telling us in 2016, a house-sized boulder came down the pass, Salkantai Pass. It's either a combination of ice fall or large rock fall mm -hmm. that then landed in the lake and carved out a big chunk out of the side of it, so it basically created a massive spillway that caused a tidal wave because it drained the entire lake. Now you've got this, this tidal wave of mud, rock, water, ice coming roaring down through the valley. And also it, it unfortunately killed 13 yeah. local villagers that lived here. And that just kind of wiped everything out yeah. in its way. If we check everything, it's white granite. This is part of the Machu Picchu nat na uh, natural formation. In geography, we call batholic of the Machu Picchu. So we're doing a little offering as we're standing here on the Incan steps as part of our Incan trail hike. Three coccalypse, I guess you're asking, hey, how come three? Why not four? Why not five? You guys know the universal law, the balance of the life, you know, the causes. This is, you know, the Incas, they used to believe about that but they believe as a human, part of the, our body. The number three was something special. Also, this is related with the spiritual world as well. With this ritual works. So basically you guys need to hold it with your both hands and start to mention all the mountains, my friends. We got Salkantay, you know, we got another one, Pumasino, and we got here, you know, Pumantay. Say thank you so much for realizing that a special goal, you know? So that's how we do, my friends. You don't need to be loud, you secretly tell about that. And after that, you know, you find any rope, you know? And then, you know, you put, you know, under the, you know, your stuff. Excellent, my friends. It's a simple ritual. Prior you pray, prior you energy, it's becoming here. Leave a little bit of myself on the mountain. We are about three kilometers, half an hour away from lunchtime. So we just learned that the city Cusco, not Cusco, but Cusco, actually is an uh, Incan uh, word for belly button because the belly button connects to the umbilical cord and all of the Incan trails throughout South America all connected right to, into Cusco because they believe that that was the critical for life and to support the Incan people. Made it down to the jungle. You can tell by the vegetation behind me, the scenery has definitely changed. So once you are above Salkantay Pass and you go down, you're pretty much descending 3000 feet in elevation. And well, it's the Amazon. So once you get down to that tree line, this evening we'll be staying in these traditional Andean huts in the middle of the Amazon forest. It's time to eat lunch, so let's go. So they got some lomo soltado. It's a fusion of Peruvian and Asian cuisines. The uh, temperature has increased quite a bit. At least probably 20 degrees, 30 degrees of increase. Uh, we, we're about three quarters of the way to our campsite for the night. And 
uh, so far it's just really pretty. It's really interesting to see the transition from going from the high Andean desert up into the high Alpine. We've got mountains, you got glaciers, rivers, all that kind of stuff. And now you're coming down through this transition zone of the, uh, the Amazon jungle and how quickly it occurred because the, you know we were just hiking for maybe an hour or so and all of a sudden I'm like, whoa, there's trees, there's plants with all these big leaves to catch the sunlight. So it's day two and we've made it to our second destination here on the Salkantai Trek. We are staying at these Andean huts. The Again, bin. they have a very small doorway, so we get to crawl in. Watch your head. There's a light. Yeah, but I bet it's probably... Oh! oh there it goes. Look the at light that. works. They so you've got two beds. One. I think the ones with the teddy bears are calling Tim's name, right? Tim. Am I right? Let's get showered. There's So you can actually pie hot showers here or cold showers i think we're going to shower tonight ten soles ten soles for that and we are going to go to tea time and dinner so we'll catch you later we'll catch you tomorrow morning hi are you a friendly chicken <sighs> of course tim got a cerveza Negra. these are amazing chefs from this whole weekend <laughs> On day three, we continue our journey in the Peruvian Amazon to Aguas Calientes. As part of our four-day Salcantay trekking package, we also make a stop at a fruit farm as well as a coffee farm along the way. Looks like it snowed overnight in the past. So our guide, JC, said that it would be snowy up in the higher elevation. So in Salcantay, it will be snowy. So I'm glad we passed the summit yesterday. So this is the town we stayed in last night called Chaviwai. It means it's a fish. Came through this valley, that's Sakantai. Came all the way through there to this town. But the government in the last 15 years decided to build a different road, which is way easy and cheap to ship for all the families, you know? What has happened? All those families, Chaiwai and Colpa Pampa, they got a stack, my friends. Okay? So renting their own space. My goodness. Runaway horse. That's why, my friend. So we work with the four families. We work with the two families in the motorcycle, with the five families. The next part of our four-day Salkantai Pass journey takes us through the Peruvian Amazon, formerly known as the Peruvian Jungle. About 13% of the entire Amazon rainforest is located in Peru, and the others are in Brazil and Colombia. So we are passing through um, some agricultural areas right now. Um, what you just saw was a passion fruit vine, tree, farm. <laughs> Essentially the yellow ones are ripe and the green ones are not, but they are very sweet and we've seen it all over Peru and Lima. It's very popular to use in different dishes around this country. Is it good? Sweet? Very sweet. It's like a caviar, but fruit version. Caviar. It's like a caviar, but fruit version. Wow. So she was letting us try some cacao beans and also some in fresh chocolate and we bought some and this is 75% cacao. Mm, so delicious. After a fantastic trek through the Peruvian Amazon, we are provided a shuttle by our guide service through Salcantay Trekking to make our way to the entrance of where the train tracks are to hike to Aguas Calientes. 
So we're at the coffee farm and we're about to check out the coffee beans as well as try some coffee that they are brewing for us. So to check it out, this is what coffee actually looks like. The dry and it's coffee nice. beans. Chow fun. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our last meal with our chef and sous chef. Yum. Got pork, veggies, fried rice, chicken. So the best, best quality, my friends, is this one. You can see the dark, you know? The dark ones, that means like when the coffee is fully ready, my friends. We're passing down. Mm. The next one. The expert roasters, they check the sound, they check the color and the smell. This is a medium coffee, huh? Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's That's a termino medio. This is a place where we can, where, where we need to grind. Yeah. <laughs> Peru offers a great biodiversity of climate soils and sunlight, making it one of the ideal places to grow coffee. It is one of the top 10 coffee producers and exporters in the entire world, and also the second producers in organic coffee. Our chefs, I'm gonna thank them. So we just got dropped off for lunch. We are now heading to a town called Aguas Caliente, and this is actually the rail line to where you'll head up to the base of Aguas Caliente up to Machu Picchu. So to get to Aguas Caliente and we're going to spend the night there in a in a hotel, go out to a restaurant for dinner, just kind of relax because tomorrow morning we are up and early at 4 a.m. to then head up to Machu Picchu. We are going to be one of the first groups to actually enter. So there's about 4,500 people allowed a day per the permits to Machu Picchu. And each, I guess, time frame? Time slot, time yeah. Time slot allows about 500 people. So we are going to be one of the first 500 up tomorrow. So we'll definitely keep you posted on how that goes on. This is the uh, Peruvian shortcut. Pretty much straight up. So Helen and I have actually have extra permits so that we can hike up Machu Picchu Mountain tomorrow after we uh, kind of check out the Machu Picchu main area. Main area. And then we'll go up to the uh, summit of Machu Picchu Mountain. Another alternative option, instead of hiking to Machu Picchu by foot as we did, you can actually take the Peru Rail, which is a train that offers daily departures to Machu Picchu. There's also the Incan Rail Line as well, where you can treat yourself to a luxury train on the Hiram Bingham, which is also named after the explorer who discovered the archaeological ruins of Machu Picchu. See entrance to Aguas Calientes, the doors into Grand Machu Picchu. Aguas Calientes is the gateway into Machu Picchu. It is the closest town to the famous Incan ruins, sitting around 5.5 miles away. It means hot waters in Spanish and sits in the Riumbamba River Valley located in southeast Peru. It's known for its thermal baths and it sits around 6,693 feet in elevation. So cute, right? What do you think? Yeah. He says it's even more pretty at night when the lights are lit up. <laughs> We made it. Oh, the bed is soft. Thank God. Nice. A nice bed and a nice bathroom. A nice view of the elevator. We've enjoyed the Salcantay trek with people from all around the world, Belgium, Spain. It's so great to meet like-minded travelers and to have some team bonding time. We decided to end our night in Aguas Calientes by visiting a place where we could make our own Pisco Sours, the national drink of Peru. On day four, we finally make it to the entrance of Machu Picchu. We are very excited to finally climb Machu Picchu Mountain to get these spectacular views from above. Gracias. It's 
about 5.30 a.m. We are the first people to get on. Are you excited? Yeah, I just hope it clears up for us. We learned from our guide, JC, that Machu Picchu is 75% original construction. It is one of the most well-preserved archeological sites of its time. Machu Picchu is also a known fly zone by the Peruvian government, so helicopters and planes cannot come through this area, hence why you have to take a train to come to Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu is also known as the city in the clouds, due to the fact of where it sits on the mountain and how the clouds come and go to reveal the beautiful, stunning landscape of this untouched peak. Look at this. Juan Carlos, our tour guide, said we have to quickly get over here because these clouds are rising from the valley and it might cover up Machu Picchu, so we gotta go. We didn't beat the clouds. We did see it, but by the time we walked over here, we were stuck behind people and we couldn't, we couldn't get to it before those clouds blew over, but... Clouds change every 20, 30 minutes. So if you wait around, um, the tour is about three to four hours long when you come with a guide or even self-guided. So just make sure to stick around. It might show itself again. So we're currently waiting at one of the lower viewing decks. This lower viewing deck has the classic view of, of the classic picture that you see all over the internet. But now we just wait. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's pretty amazing. The uh, architecture and engineering from back then is just, it's pretty astounding. The Incas, they have a very, very short period. Mm. But it's incredible, in such a short period, they expand the entire Andes, you know? All over the entire Andes. They colonize so many different civilizations. And it started to sit in the highest season of the Incas, their populations went out until 12 million people. The entire civilization, they able to speak Quechua. Quechua was the main language for them. The people, the little bubble, which is able to live in Cusco, which is the high Incas class, they able to speak a secret language, Kina. 55 years ago, you know, the last person who able to speak this language died. As you can see behind us, seven o'clock Machu Picchu came out to play. Yeah, the fog finally lifted and now we have this beautiful view of Machu Picchu behind us. Juan Carlo was right. <laughs> Literally at seven o'clock he said the clouds would disappear and... And they did, yeah. So it's this way? So checkpoint for the mountain. All right, let's get started. Pretty much the steps all the way. Wondering how many steps lead to the top. So we're going up Machu Picchu Mountain. There's specific entry times in the morning. I believe they close at noon, which is kind of odd. It's so early in the morning, but we're gonna try to get up here in less than two hours. So we can try to make it back down to do the lower circuit because we do want to check out the other archeological sites. I'm breathing really hard because there's many stairs, but let's see. We got to do this in record time. This is really tough. Well, if you decide to do Machu Picchu Mountain, that's a lot of steps, and now they're big steps too. They're not small steps. Andrew and I allowed bringing in trekking poles, so it's definitely going to be a lot on the knees. Take breaks when you need to, but on the way down, it's going to be a doozy. Legs are burning. They should be. Oh god. <laughs> Why do we do this horse? <laughs> Gotta switch back up there. Looks like we're getting close. Machu Picchu Mountain is one of the highest peaks in this area sitting at over 10,100 feet tall or over 3,000 meters, and it also has over 2,500 feet of elevation gain. You also have to purchase a separate permit ticket from your Machu Picchu entrance ticket, so definitely keep that in mind. So booking with a guide is always going to be easier because you will have first pick of the mountain entrance times. How are you feeling? <laughs> Tim doesn't want to say anything because he's tired. Point of Picchu, Machu Picchu's to the right. Down the fog. Oh, down in the fog. Pretty much all our footage is going up. Might be able to make it under 
an hour, which is way less time than we initially thought. We thought it was going to take at least two hours. Oh, it's late trip. We're so close. There's a false summit on Machu Picchu Mountain. False summit. That's it. We made it. Nice job. We made it in just 57 minutes. Well, we did it. We did it and we're tired. We're very tired, hot, sweaty. It's very foggy. So many people are just sitting around waiting for a clearing. As you see, that's the theme of Machu Picchu. Yeah, the fog's actually just kind of blowing up over Machu Picchu Mountain right now. So we're just going to see if we can wait around for it to clear. I'm definitely not looking forward to the steps back down. Oh no, just there's some they're definitely not up to code. I'm just glad it's not <laughs> raining. I'm just like crossing my fingers it doesn't rain so I don't slip all over the place. <laughs> And another hike you can do with iconic views of Machu Picchu is Huayna Picchu. We didn't have time to do that mountain, but we had other people within our group who did that hike and they really loved it. It can typically take about one to two hours to get up here, so... One hour is doing it fast. Yeah, that's so, it. Yeah. If so it wasn't plan, for plan accordingly. You have to take plenty of, plenty of rest breaks. There are no bathrooms up here, so you just got to kind of hold it, yeah. but... All right, let's go check out the lower section. All right. All right, we're heading down. Ten and six. Look at that. Yeah, buddy. We missed it for mm -hmm. 20 minutes up there. Ten and six. We checked in at 8.05. Machu Picchu is located around 7,000 feet above sea level in the Andes Mountains, and it's one of the most visited tourist destinations in all of Peru. It is a symbol of the Incan Empire, and it was built around 1420 AD. Machu Picchu is also designated as the UNESCO World Heritage Site, and also it is named one of the Seven Wonders of the World. This is just amazing. Just having to extract all this and then restore it and keep it in such pristine conditions over these years. Interesting things all around. All these different rooms. Ooh, tight fit, tight oh. fit. This is like the wall in Cusco where it's just like so finely cut. This amazing world wonder was discovered by a history professor out of Yale and Harvard by the name of Hiram Bingham. He brought a team of researchers to help recover the site and work together with the local people to ensure that the uncovering of these archaeological ruins were protected for the future to come. Just finished Machu Picchu. What do you think, Christina? It was great. <laughs> it's a little bit crowded now. It's about 11:20 a.m. We got in about 5:36 a.m. Yeah. And now it's just packed full of people. So we're gonna catch a bus down. It's about $12 USD, and just ready to eat. All right, bye. So we are at a restaurant called Toto's and they serve burgers, salads. Seriously have the best views in all of Aguas Calientes. You have this big river canyon. Yeah. You can pretty much see the valley that we came in through. How chaotic the train station is. Getting on a train back to Cusco. Well, well we have like a couple more stops left. Thanks so much for tuning in to our Peru travel series. On our next videos, we will be taking you into our full time travel journey. So make sure to follow along and we'll definitely post some more information in our upcoming videos as well as our social media channels. If you like this video, hit that like button, drop a comment to help support our video and our channel. Make sure to subscribe and we'll definitely see you on the next trail.